Helldivers 2 has single-handedly taken over my entire life. If you somehow aren't familiar with this game by now, it's sort of like if Starship Troopers and the Terminator had a baby and fed that baby nothing but American military propaganda. And I mean that in the best way possible. Helldivers is probably one of the best horde shooters of the last decade, and in all honesty, it's probably the best that I've experienced in the genre since Left 4 Dead 2. Now, I haven't had the opportunity to talk a ton of hours into this game yet, but my experience with it so far has been amazing. It's been the best space co-op game that I've played in at least the last three months, and it's something that I feel is definitely worth talking about. Now the game is set up in a way that mirrors an actual war. In the middle of it all, you have Super Earth, a, a place of peace and freedom and democracy. Think if like the United States managed to take over the entire planet and just Americafy it. That's sort of the same vibe that you get with Super Earth. But anyways, all around it are enemies who are trying to steal it from us. On the Eastern Front are the Terminids. These guys are the bugs. Now they're pretty weak, but what they lack in strength, they make up for in numbers. If you aren't careful and they're just running around all willy-nilly, you can quickly find yourself getting cornered, attacked, and absolutely embarrassed by these guys. Now on the western front are the commie-loving, rocket-launching, significantly scarier automatons. Now unlike the bugs, these guys don't play around. They've got grenades, rocket launchers, lasers, machine guns, tanks, giant-ass artillery things. They hit harder and look scarier. And if you disagree with me on that, you're wrong. But anyways, you've got these two fronts that are slowly inching closer and closer to Earth, and it's our job to defend against them. Now the game is entirely co-op. It has no PvP, so everyone is united with one another against the common enemy. And for once, it actually feels like a game is bringing a community together instead of dividing one. Complete strangers are having shared experiences because we're all all fighting against the same thing. And this leads to all sorts of conversations about the game because the entire player base is experiencing the same thing collectively. So you'll see players online begging for reinforcements or strategizing with one another on what they should attack next. And this dynamic becomes even cooler when you learn that the game is live service, meaning that the developers are actually continuing to update and change the story of their game in real time in accordance to what the player base has achieved. In fact, Arrowhead Game Studios has employed a full-time game master who strategizes the enemy's attacks based on how the players have been doing, which is just crazy. This approach has led to a sort of fascination amongst the player base as it's made many of them feel as though they're fighting in an actual digital war. And it's incredibly immersive as a player because it seems like everyone in the community has sort of just committed to the bit. For instance, players have been campaigning online with actual Helldivers propaganda trying to recruit new people to buy the game and join in on the fight. And as funny and stupid as that might sound, this may makes sense within the context of the game, because the more players you have completing missions, the better our odds are of liberating the planets. Arrowhead Game Studios has designed their game in a way to where it markets itself. The more people that buy and play the game, the more enjoyable the collective experience should be for the rest of the community. From a business perspective, that's genius. I mean, I genuinely can't think of any other game that's pulled this sort of strategy off and held Divers has done it on a global scale. How? <laughs> now, absolutely none of this would matter if the game wasn't a fun experience. And luckily for us, the gameplay itself is really, really satisfying. The movement controls are responsive and give the player freedom to attack the enemy from a variety of different angles. Oftentimes, you'll find yourself running from a horde of enemies and diving around like you're in an action movie. More often than not, I'll find myself playing more defensively than offensively. It's super easy to find yourself surrounded, so it's crucial
crucial that you continue to put distance in between yourself and the enemy. I'd even go as far to say that movement is the most important mechanic of the game, because if you can't keep your enemies at a manageable distance, you're going to be running around like an absolute lunatic. Helldivers 2 also succeeds at what I like to call cinematic gameplay, where the scenes that unfold within the game wind up making you feel like you're living through your own Vietnam. Lasers and rockets will whiz past you, and you'll find yourself diving behind whatever cover you can manage to find. Bug enemies will explode and fall apart with all of the grossness yet satisfaction that you'd expect to see. My, my point being, the game is intense, and even when you're not in the heat of battle, the game finds different ways to fill you with tension. Check this out. I never knew that robots marching to a cadence would be as terrifying as it is, but my god, if that doesn't put fear in you, I don't know what will. Another one of my favorite bits in this game are the stratagem minigames. Say for instance, you're getting surrounded and you need to call in for air support. Well, to do that, you need to insert a string of different controls. To me, it's sort of reminiscent of the old school cheat codes that you used to see back in the day, except instead of like making your car fly around San Andreas, you get to unleash the full fury of a large payload of explosives. It's pretty badass. And these codes aren't hard to input by any means, but if you do manage to mess up, you have to start the sequence all the way back from the beginning. So say that the enemies are getting closer, right? You know, the, you're under fire. The trees are starting to speak binary. Oftentimes you'll get so panicked in the heat of the moment that you'll fuck up the code at least twice before you can successfully enter it. So while this is a really simple addition, it's an incredibly impactful one because it manages to keep pressure and tension on the player. It's also worth noting the intense difficulty of the game. For the most part, I've been playing on the challenging setting, and so far I've been having a really hard time with it, and there are five difficulty settings above that, which is wild. Now, I've heard a lot of people complaining about the amount of enemies and just absurd shit that happens at some of the higher levels. There are some people who feel that the devs are intentionally trying to screw them over with, like, the enemy placement. And to their credit, I have seen a lot of videos of just some impossible situations for players to fight their ways out of. But to be fair, there are easier difficulties. <laughs> like, I just don't understand the mindset of setting the game to the highest difficulty and then complaining that the game is too difficult. I think that's kind of silly. And this point sort of segues me into simultaneously the best and worst part of Helldivers 2, the community. Now naturally, when a game explodes in popularity, you're bound to have a fan them that, how should I say, uh, doesn't stay pleasant for very long. <laughs> now to be fair, when we're talking about fandoms, it's usually the weirdos within them that are the most vocal. And it's important to note that the voice of the few doesn't represent the voice of the majority. With that being said though, <laughs> there's been a lot of nonsense and negativity that I've been hearing from the community, and if I'm truly going to be all-encompassing with the Helldivers video, uh, I feel like I need to at least mention it. So for reference, Helldivers 2 has been a bit of a victim of its own success. It's so popular right now that Arrowhead Game Studios are having a hard time keeping up with their servers, which is leading to some players being forced to wait in a queue. Now, the devs and CEO of Arrowhead have publicly come out and said, hey, we're working on it. We're, we're trying our best to get this issue solved as soon as possible. For some players, though, this wasn't enough, and they took it upon themselves to contact and harass the developers directly. I just found that whole ordeal to be bizarre and irritating. Let the devs do their job and stay out of the way. There are a lot of players who take the game just a bit too seriously. And I guess some are just under the impression that the developers are intentionally trying to sabotage the game and screw over their player base, which doesn't really make sense. From all of the messages that I've seen Arrowhead and Johan release, they seem to be truly invested in giving the community the best product imaginable. And overall, they just 
just seem to be nice people. <laughs> so I hate that they're receiving some of this backlash just over the simple stuff that they're already fixing. And with every single patch and update, there seem to be a bunch of people complaining about the subtle changes that are made. If something gets nerfed, they have a problem with it. If something gets buffed, they have a problem with it. It's so frustrating to see certain players taking an excellent game for granted just because they disagree with the developer choice. And dude, I don't I don't know about you guys, but I find it hard to enjoy a game when all the fan base does is complain. And I totally understand that this is a natural part of any game. There's always toxic fan bases, but it just seems especially harmful and nasty when like the whole point of Helldivers was to bring us together. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like the whole purpose of the game is that we're working with one another. Get along. Helldivers 2 is probably going to be the first and last of its kind, at least on a scale such as this. It feels like we seldom see good co-op games anymore, and I think everybody has sort of flocked to them recently because we miss them. Not every multiplayer game has to be a PvP or a battle royale to be successful, and releases like Helldivers 2 and Lethal Company are proving that to us. I remember back in the days of couch co-op where I'd sit down in the living room and play games with my older brother, and it seemed like there was a period there after all of that where the idea of co-op games just sort of faded away. But today, it would seem like we're on the cusp of a co-op renaissance. At least that's what my wishful thinking is leading me to believe. If more game developers could care for their consumers the way that Arrowhead Studios has, the game industry would be a much better place. And I think that we're slowly starting to see a bit of a shift towards that. Lately, it would seem that the massive AAA cash grabs have been failing, and the games that are captivating all of us are the ones coming out of smaller, more passionate studios. In conclusion, if you're into playing games with your friends, I think you'll enjoy Helldivers too. It's a really well put together experience, and the premise of the game is just too cool to pass up. With that being said though, thank you so much for watching this entire video. You know I love you. I'm out.